So hi everyone, thank you for uh, coming to the talk during your lunch time. Uh, so today I will talk about uh, some of the research that we do and uh, just a little bit about myself. So I joined UCF uh, two years ago as a director of uh, cybersecurity and privacy cluster. And uh, I'm also a professor in computer science. And on the bottom uh, row of the screen show like all the places that I have been. Um, prior to joining UCF, I was uh, a professor at uh, uh, ECE in uh, NC State for 16 years. Sorry, that was, uh, yeah, 16 years. Your and slide is not updating. A, a program director at the National Science Foundation. Okay, so next slide. So I'm going to spend a little bit time to talk about the cluster, the cybersecurity cluster. So this is part of UCF faculty cluster initiative started in 2017. Right now we have eight faculty members advising 45 PhD students, four MS and 17 bachelor students. And we are uh, essentially tr trying to ramp up uh, our research and visibility across the country. So we are active in publications and uh, th that's the website that we have and uh, we've been supported generously by uh, uh, various funding agencies, both in, in government and industry. Here is the current cluster members. So um, you can see for yourself the names. And these are the research areas that the cluster members work on. So trustworthy cloud, blockchain, secure machine learning, organizational and behavioral, privacy, malware, digital forensics, software security, IoT security, human computer interaction. So the, the, the task that uh, UCF gave was to, to me was to foster interdisciplinary collaboration across UCF for uh, cybersecurity related research. So if you are interested in joining, if you are working in cybersecurity uh, research, or if you're thinking of working in cybersecurity research, uh, please contact me at yan.solihin at ucf.edu. So now moving on to my own research. Uh, so uh, I founded ARPERS Research Group uh, and uh, this, uh, I'm by training, I'm a computer architect and uh, I, these days I, work uh, crossing over to some of the operating systems. So this is uh, the, 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 what, what people call the architecture and systems layer. Uh, work in multi-core and parallel architecture, memory hierarchy and memory systems and emerging technologies, including non-volatile memory. So uh, as a computer architect, I'm trained to essentially to make any computer system or, uh, or any platform fast and uh, working in a cybersecurity cluster, I'm also trying to make the computer system secure. So fast and secure, that's what, what I do. And uh, some of the uh, research problems that I've been working on is related to the cloud computing. So how can we make the cloud uh, computation trustworthy or the cloud platforms trustworthy? How can we run AI? or machine learning uh, programs securely in the cloud to perform multi-party computation and you know, uh, privacy uh, oriented uh, computing. And I've uh, also wor working on secure execution environment in which you, when you run uh, your program in a cloud or, or, or even in your workstation or laptop, how can you make sure that uh, the, the program is given a secure environment by the processor so that any software vulnerabilities in operating system, device drivers, and so on, don't affect this, uh, uh, the, the confidentiality and the integrity of your program. Working on side channel as well. And uh, since joining UCF, I've been uh, uh, supported by the following uh, uh, government and industry agencies for which I'm very grateful. So I'm going to just select uh, three research uh, uh, problems that I've been working on recently, just to give you a sample of uh, what uh, we are working on. So first project is essentially on uh, the rise of a new thing. And in, in computer systems, typically uh, is, uh, we, we have this kind of thing rarely, only once in 
uh, a lot of years. And recently we have something that, um, you know, that bridges the gap of speed between DRAM as well as uh, storage, which consists of hard disk drive and SSD. And typically, essentially DRAM can be accessed in like an order of uh, a few tens of nanoseconds, whereas the SSD can be accessed in like order of uh, uh, microseconds. So there's essentially a thousand uh, X gap in speed between them. So recently something came along, which is the called persistent memory, which bridges the gap between DRAM and SSD. So this is an example. They just came out this year, actually. In fact, we uh, just placed an order to purchase some of this. So the characteristics of persistent memory is that they are dense, cheap uh, per byte compared to DRAM, and it, it, we, it has a much better scaling potential in the future. So it's gradually going to replace DRAM as main memory. The interesting thing about persistent memory is that it's non-volatile, but also byte addressable. So which uh, provides kind of like a, a hybrid uh, of uh, uh, between DRAM and SSD. And the non-volatility is the most interesting aspect of that, in my opinion. So in the research community, system research community, they are, um, they are like two basic approaches how to use the persistent memory. Some of them want to use as a faster SSD to, hold, uh, to host the file system or memory map files. The advantage of this is that file system is a mature technology. The problem is, is that uh, uh, every time you access a file, you have to go through a bunch of uh, software stack and those add high, very high over uh, software overheads, especially in comparison to the access time to persistent memory, which is much lower. So our approach has been, uh, we're looking at the, uh, a different way of using persistent memory, we use it as main memory. So we want to keep data structures persistently in memory using a new abstraction called persistent memory object or PMO. So this way we decouple the lifestyle of data from process. Okay, so in, in, in the past you have process, you initialize data, you work on data. When you, the process terminates, data is reclaimed. Here we decouple them. So data can live in memory much longer than uh, in, in a process address space. So in order to do this, we provide a new system call called attach and detach. So data in memory is attached to the process address space if the process wants to work on it. And then once it's done, it's detached. So it goes back to the physical memory. So this, uh, we essentially save a lot of things here. So we skip rebuilding data structure and tearing it down. So that's unnecessary work gone. And we use a, a store instruction to persist data instead of using system calls. But there is a big challenge, which is now we expose persistent data to memory uh, security attacks. So now it's, uh, PMO is vulnerable to accidental malicious or malicious memory read and write. How can we secure it? So we came up with a few schemes we can detach it when not needed, and we can randomize its location periodically. We can protect it using a, a protection domain that's uh, available in current processors, and we, we accelerate that. And then how can we uh, attach it fast and detach it fast? Because that's critical if we want to uh, detach, detach it when we don't need it. So, we uh, modify the uh, uh, page table structure. So essentially now the PMO comes with embedded page table that can be attached uh, to the page table of the process very quickly. Also, when we use a, a protection domain, we essentially uh, obtain uh, much, uh, uh, much higher speed up, right? So using the, our uh, architecture scheme, so we have about a hundred times faster than the state of the art domain virtualization. So that's a, se a second project. We also have like a, a ensuring crash recovery property. So this uh, to be presented this month actually in micro. And then uh, uh, my final project I want to share is uh, 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 on serverless computing. So serverless computing is a new trend in cloud computing in which 
you know, instead of instantiating a virtual machine, now you can instantiate just a application or function. And we can uh, uh, port application by breaking them down into functions and then schedule them. So there's like a pros and a cons of uh, uh, serverless computing, but there's a lot of pros actually. E easier to manage resource, cheaper, you get built only for a resource that you use but there are a lot of challenges and these are the challenges that uh, we are trying to address. All right, so I'm going to uh, 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 cl close my presentation. These are the collaborators that uh, uh, I have and I have to thank them and also uh, the cluster colleagues which have been, uh, who have been supportive and these are the, the students that I'm advising and uh, thank you and I'll be happy to take questions.